Robert Daly is director of the Wilson Center's Kissinger Institute on China in the United States. He joins us today to discuss the softer side of U.S.-China relations, in a sense, soft power. The softer side, but it's getting increasingly, if not hard, at least increasingly consequential. Yeah, now we've talked a lot about yeah. the potential for military conflict in the South China Sea or things like that, for yeah. obvious reasons. Yep. But what about this, this soft power battle back and forth? This rages yeah. sort of silently under the radar in many cases. It's under the radar, but it's growing. And soft power is a slippery subject under the best of times. But there are several different sides to it. On the one hand, it's generally... View, China's soft power is viewed as negative in many parts of the world. China has very little attractive power. Very few countries seek to emulate its system. Chinese music, Chinese films, Chinese institutions, Chinese novels have almost no market internationally. But now what we're seeing is, is, is something new. We are seeing a large population multiplied by purchasing power and globalization having an impact on world markets. The big fact here, the thing we need to keep an eye on, in February it was reported uh, that by Hurun, which is a billionaire's index, that China had more dollar billionaires now than the United States did. China had 568 to our 535. That's not the key fact. The key fact is now that China's got a bigger middle class. Credit Suisse estimated last year that China has 109 people whose annual income is between 50 to 500,000 US to America's 92. China becomes the tastemaker to the world. And American film, American publishing is now publishing and producing films for a Chinese market, and the Chinese market is censored. So what this means is that Chinese censors have a say at what we see at the multiplex, or perhaps even what we see at a bookstore shelf. Or at least what edit they see in China. It could go that. So the yep. second largest book market and the second largest film market. In and the world moving right to number one quickly, although here is in other areas, uh, there's some cheating on the Chinese side. Uh, during the height of the Chinese film season, which is near Spring Festival in February, the box office champion was a Hong Kong fil film, Yip Man 3. It was later revealed that they had cheated. They had bought mm. tickets so they could fill theaters with nobody to win the box office. Mm. Nevertheless, clearly the case that Hollywood is writing scripts, changing characters for a Chinese market. Well, well let's talk about a few of those. Uh, the People's Liberation Army daily branded Zootopia, of right. all films, an instrument of American propaganda. They said this was a more subtle case. What was their objection to that film? Well, their objection to that film, one, is it was the box office champion. It's enormous in China. People love the main character. They love the sloth bureaucrats. And these have become internet memes in Did China. Did you see the film? As they hear, I saw it opening yeah. weekend with my yeah, eight-year-old daughter. Yeah, that was a terrific film Pretty well. good stuff. But you've got, remember at the beginning, before the her heroine rabbit goes to the big city, her parents, in Confucian fashion, this is the PLA critique, say, don't stick your head out, go with the flow, don't try to be a hero, stay here and grow vegetables. And this mm -hmm. harkens back to the Chinese idea that uh, they say, chang da chu tou niao, it's the bird that sticks its head out that gets shot, the nail that sticks up gets hammered back in. And the PLA critic said, the very American rabbit, no, I've got to be me, an individual wins the day, goes off to the city. And so this is a vector for, this is the Chinese critique, American individualism deliberately to infect and weaken China. Now, it should be noted that that critique was widely mocked by China's young netizens, mm -hmm. but it's very much in keeping with Xi Jinping's warnings about insidious Western, Western and universal values. values. Now, too much can be made of this. Some of this stuff is just good fun, too little can be made of it, too. This is a long-term change that we're watching. Well, uh, another film that we uh, it hasn't been released yet, but coming up in November from Marvel Studios, a subdivision of Disney, right. which rules the box office globally. And which is opening a new Disney world in Shanghai. Uh, Doctor Strange. Right. Uh, the, the, the mentor of Doctor Strange, the person who trains him in the mystic arts and the comic book lore, is a Tibetan monk. A Tibetan uh, the monk ancient one. shot through with the most absurd forms of Orientalism and the mysteries of the well, Eastern magic in context, so the 60s or It's 70s. a comic book, yeah. sure. But now we, we've just uh, seen an interview that was published in the New York Times today with the makers of that movie who said that they made the ancient one Celtic. So my Irish pride. Uh, Tilda courses, Swinton, uh, actress. Right. Is it Celtic, not Tibetan, because they were afraid that making it a Tibetan would be controversial in China and they would lose one billion viewers. So again, it makes a difference with what we see. Now, there's, there's an upside to this. Uh, because American uh, producers and directors want Chinese box office, they are now casting more Chinese actors in films. And there are a lot of mm -hmm. terrific Chinese actors. Jiang Wen and Donnie Yen are going to be in the new Star Wars Rogue One movie. 
that's fine. That's an, an enrichment. Uh, but there are also movies that we're not seeing. If you remember uh, in the 1980s when we were worried about Japan, we had movies like Black Rain with Michael Douglas. Yes. Uh, which, and I'm not defending movies like that, which were problematic in their way, but this is part of naturally how Hollywood behaves. I have no doubt that we'd be seeing more movies, we saw this with 24, for example, Kiefer Sutherland, that showed problems coming out of China if it weren't for our desire for Chinese box Well, for office. these movies, these blockbusters, the, the Chinese market is the difference between a billion dollars worldwide or not. Right. Which often is a, the Batman v Superman movie was a break-even point, it was viewed as. The, so, but what this raises for me is the specter of, and as a journalist I've encountered this in my own uh, profession, is, uh, is the, sort of the, the soft censorship, if we're talking about right. soft power, the self-censorship. Self so Marvel is making a decision that could move hundreds of millions of dollars in their casting of the Ancient One. We right. saw the ABA cancel a book that they'd commissioned from a, a Chinese activist right. because at least initially an ABA email revealed for fears of Chinese government not liking the book. Later they tried to walk that back. Uh, how much do we know about how much self-censorship goes on? Well, of course, self-censorship is largely unknowable. There's, there is no metric. But the soundings and the trend lines are not good. And again, it's the power of the purse. I don't mean to be implying here an insidious Chinese plot directed out of Beijing to take over the publishing industry and the film industry. These are American companies right. doing what companies do. But it makes a difference for us in a way that we have to keep track of. When we look at soft power, cultural influence, the influence of ideas, certainly since we established relations with China in 1979, year on year and over the course of those decades, we have had far more influence on China culturally than China is having on us. That worm may be turning. It's too early to call it. But I say the soundings, week on week, well, are not I, good. Well, we're volunteering not to use our power, essentially. That, that is correct. And there are other, there are in, other in forms pursuit of, of this. profit. In pursuit yep. of profit. And we see a, a, another very different kind of case. And again, it, it's hard to know how to describe this accurately without casting accusations on people that can't be backed up. But a very interesting piece by uh, Perry Link in the New York Review of Books, in which the new Norton Anthology of Chinese poetry, mm -hmm. so Norton Anthology, also a tastemaker, they establish the canon through these anthologies. Uh, and this was put together by a Chinese, an, academic, an American academic of Chinese origin, trained in China. And this anthology doesn't include the works of writers like Liu Binyan or Liu Xiaobo, who, were, who are objectionable to the Chinese Communist Party. It's very much in a Western form, Sanitized. a Chinese anthology. So we welcome the masses of China's talent that are coming to the United States or that stay in China and whose cultural works reach us in academia, in film, in writing. This is wonderful. This is an enrichment. But when through various ways these standards for regarding literature and film are adapted by us, that I think is a problem. And we focus primarily on popular culture or culture or higher art. Uh, but some of the accusations in, in the influence of soft power involve more serious matters. Uh, the Chinese have said that the Ukrainian revolution, uh, that the Arab Spring, were largely influenced by infiltration of Western values. Through, the, and the vector in those cases being NGOs. And in some cases they can point to particular NGOs in, in which uh, there may be a case. And of course this is something uh, when China thinks about its security, threats to its security, they look at the Soviet example, they look at the Arab Spring, they look at the color revolutions, and are made very nervous by that. Uh, it appears that China is about to finally promulgate its new law regulating the actions of international NGOs within China, and that they are going to move regulation of those NGOs from the Ministry of Civil Affairs, which makes a certain amount of sense, to the Ministry of Public Security. Uh, which will treat them in many ways as suspects before the fact. So, so is a, a retreat from the Western values uh, in pursuit of higher profit in China, is this uh, a danger to democracy? And let me connect the dots in right. a way where that doesn't sound so melodramatic. We've lo you know, long thought that things like, whether it's McDonald's or Wrangler Jeans or Avengers movies in a more contemporary right. setting, are a sort of a, a backdoor way of promoting free expression, uh, liberal democracy essentially around the world. We need to keep a very, very close eye on precisely that question. To say it's too soon to call it. We can see new trend lines. There's cause for concern. And so we need to keep track of it, which we'll be doing at the Kissinger Institute, even as we welcome and celebrate the kinds of cultural contacts and mutual enrichment that, are, that, that work out for everybody. And that's happening too. But we're seeing a new stream. And again, it's 
purchasing power. This is not the jackbooted People's Liberation right. Army marching across borders. It's purchasing power, global markets coming out of a heavily censored and in some ways paranoid cultural bureaucracy within China. That's the combination we need to be on guard. Well, thanks for joining us. As you continue to track it through the Kissinger Institute, we'll love to continue to speak to you about it and without us becoming Siskel and Ebert. Right. <laughs> thanks, Robert. Thank you.